Hello YouTube and welcome to What The Math. Today we're taking a look at Chapter 8, F Valid Arguments. This is essentially the uh, everything we've been working for in logic. Um, and here the argument is defined as a set of propositions, uh, call it premise, that lead to conclusion. Here's an example of such argument. An example is right here, uh, a simple example of an argument. If George is at the beach, then he's getting burned. This is the first part, this is the first premise. Uh, I'm gonna use red for this. Uh, George is at the beach, this is the second premise, therefore George is getting sunburned, and this is the conclusion right here. So there's actually two parts to this, and let's just rewrite this in terms of letters. So P here is George is at the beach, Q here is he's getting sunburned. And so now what we can do is rewrite this in uh, logic format, and we can use P and Q to define everything. So first uh, premise right here, if George is at the beach, then he's getting sunburned. If P, then Q. Second premise, George is at the beach, P. And conclusion, therefore George is getting sunburned. And this right here is a very simple valid argument. Now, usually when you have something like this, you have to then try to find out if it's actually a valid argument or an invalid argument. To find this, what you have to do is you have to construct a truth table. And what you will have to do then is to you have to evaluate each of these with a specific uh, emphasis on this last part. So this part right here, if this part is valid, then uh, or basically if this is uh, true, then you'll have a valid argument. If this is not true, then you'll have an invalid argument. Now let me just explain to you what, this, what I mean by this. So right here we have, let's go back for a second, uh, right here we have several operations. The first operation is uh, basically number one is right here. So this is our first uh, column of a truth table. This is if P then Q. And we have, uh, we have the tables for this already. This is called an implication. And this is actually something that you should remember, because if you remember these, you'll, um, you'll get this much faster, much easier. So implication truth table is going to be right here on the bottom. I'm going to put it right here, and this is an implication. So for implication, uh, you have truth almost always except for this part right here. It's only false if the first part is true, but the second part is false. So in other words, if I say if George is at the beach, but he's not getting sunburned, this would be false. Uh, so everything else though is true. So it's true here, true here, and true here. Then there's a second part. Second part is right here in between these two, and this is actually a conjunction. So this is our end. Conjunction is same as end. And I'm gonna put conjunction right here as well. So conjunction is right here, and conjunction can only be true when both P and Q are true. So it, when they're both true, then conjunction is true. Every other time, if one of them is false, or if both of them are false, it will always be false. So it's only true right here. And then the third step is right here again, and this once again is an implication. This is again is implica implication, but this time it's implication of this whole thing and this. So it's this implying that. Now let's just make this into a table to make this a little bit easier. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit and let's just do our P's and Q's right here. So this will be true, true, false, false. True, false, true, false. The next column here will be implication if P then Q. And we can actually copy it directly from here. So it's going to be true here, false here. And then if this is false and this is true, it will still be true. And if this is false and this is false, it will still be true. Now, the reason why it's actually true right here and right here is because of this false. Um, we haven't actually established an implication for, for when this is false. We only have an implication for when it's true. When this is true, this must be true. So when this is true and here it's false, this is why we get the false here. Now we don't really have implication for when this is false. We don't have anything that says if George is not at the beach. We only have when it says if George is at the beach, then he's getting sunburned. If he's not at the beach and he's getting sunburned, then it's uh, we don't really know if it's true or not because we haven't established this. So if this is false, 
If he's not at the beach, he might still be getting sunburn from something else, which is why these two are true, because we don't have any um, explanation for when George is not at the beach. In other words, just remember that uh, for an implication, it's almost always true except for this part right here. It's almost always true except for this. And this is implication. All right, the next column will be conjunction of P and Q. So in other words, it's going to be this. If P, then Q, and P. So now we're looking at two columns. We're looking at this column and this column. And for this to be true in here, both of them have to be true. Both columns have to be true. In other words, we can go through the both, both columns and see that it's true in the first one and true in this one, so this must be true. Here it's true, false. Here it's false, true, and here it's false, true. Meaning that all of the other ones will be false. Only one of them is true. And finally, our last part, and this is the big implication. This is essentially this and that. So I'm going to rewrite this again. P, then Q, and P, another brackets, and then leads to Q. So this is our last column right here. And the sign is, once again, implication. So here, we're only looking at uh, one, one part. We're only looking for when the first column is true. So when the first column right here is true, and the second one is false. If we have this in our example, then it means that it will be false. If, however, we have true, true, false, true, or false, false, it will be uh, automatically true. So let's take a look at this. So we have first one, uh, first column right here. Oh, anyway, by the way, we're looking at this and this. Let's actually do it in different colors. So we're looking at this and this now. We're looking at these two columns, specifically at this one first. Uh, so this is number one and this is number two. So in the first column, uh, first cell right here is true. If true, then true. If true, then true, yes, this must be true. Second column, uh, a second row. If false, then false. As soon as this is false, you can actually automatically put true. Here, here, and here. And what we get as a result is a tautology. We get true, 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 which means that if it's a tautology, it will be an automatic valid argument. So this is valid. If one of them was actually false, if one of these uh, cells was false, we would automatically get an invalid argument. And let's actually take a look at an invalid one. 